demons calling me. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Julian. I'm with Kobex. We're on our way to a roof inspection. The customer gave us a call, said they were having issues with the roof and they need a full replacement. So we're on our way there to take a look at the problem, get them taken care of here before the rainy season comes. This one's a pretty unique situation. We're working with the customer because they work a lot. So they told us that they're not going to be able to be there on the inspection. So we're gonna be doing a full inspection and working with them remotely to help them get the roof replaced. Hey, should I uh, let the customer know that I'm here? There's a car in the driveway. I just wanted to make sure what you guys discussed. Yeah, the, the sister might be there. So you might be able to just, um just knock and if no one answers you you have free range to walk around okay i just wanted to check so if he's, I should he's just... already given me like written consent of you being able to do whatever you want okay for sure so but i would knock because i think your sister's there okay all right thanks should be all set all right for sure yeah, no problem bye bye all right guys we just made it so we're gonna get started let the customer know that we're here there may be a family member so we just want to at least let them know for courtesy that we're going to be starting our inspection all right guys, so the customer gave us a free range to go ahead and start the inspection. So what I usually start with is taking pictures of everything for our production team so that we don't miss anything. And then after that, we get on the roof after we do a walk around. So right now I'm checking in the eaves to just make sure there's no dry rot visible in the eaves. Um, the two by fours are the rafters. Uh, they also have some shiplap tongue and groove that I'm inspecting to make sure there's no damage as well at this point i'm usually looking at the gutters it does look like there have been some repairs there um, and then checking the fascia boards behind the gutters as well we're going to go ahead and go into the backyard patio covers like this that don't require roofing are always documented we take pictures as well to make sure that our team knows that we're not going to be doing any roofing here at this time, I'm also usually inspecting the roof to make sure it's safe to walk on from the ground if I'm seeing anything visually. I do see some areas where the roof's uh, lifting. Um, there's already some problems that I'm seeing, so I already know what to expect when I get up there. We'll talk about it when we get up there. Some intake vents. It's doing well as far as visual dry rot goes. Take some more pictures. Now we'll get on the roof. Rule number one, don't fall. <laughs> so finding a place to put the ladder is key. And Kobex, we don't ever want to damage your gutter. So if there's somewhere safe to get on the roof where we don't need to put the ladder against the gutter, we will use somewhere else here. There is wood with flashing over that it's safe for us to put the ladder up and get up that way. I'm also picking this location to measure the roof pitch as well to make sure before I get up what how steep the roof is so that we can take note of that. There, we always take pictures of where we're putting the ladder to make sure we don't cause any damage. This is the point where we take out our pitch factor app and we're gonna measure the roof pitch. This one's right at a three and 12. So that means it will require double underlayment um, to pass code. This portion, it looks like it's the porch. The other portion of the roof is right at five and 12 maybe four and a half. So anything above four and 12 doesn't mean need any double underlayment or anything to pass code. So we'll go ahead and get on the roof and inspect and see what we have going on, see what problems we can find. So on this roof, from this location, because the drip edge flashing is on top of the shingles, I'm not able to see how many layers are here. So I will be putting the ladder up against the gutters later on to check how many layers are on the roof. That's usually the first thing that I would check. Um, but this is something we should talk about. The drip edge flashing is installed on top of the shingles. Now in code that doesn't pass code, we do install drip edge around the entire home. And currently, like I said, the drip edge flashing is on top and it should be the, one of the first things put on before the shingles. We also see some missing shingles already. So we can tell maybe they've had some missing shingles due to the storm. Um, right away, I'm seeing some fiberglass showing through. If you have a shiny roof, that's one of those way, ways that you know your roof is starting to deteriorate. You're having a lot of the granule loss. So there is a bit more here as well. And that may be due to the slope being uh, lower. So you may have water sitting longer. The, the shingles are gonna deteriorate faster. So 
Um, another thing I'm noticing right away is there's been a repair there. There's some, some uh, probably a roof coating or something that was put on. So this is probably a problem area that once I get off the roof, I'm gonna go and make sure I don't see any dry rot or damage underneath here as well. So it looks like the missing shingles came from here. Uh, pretty easy to spot. It does look like there have been some repairs around this area at some point. So a repair was probably done. Maybe the shingles were installed properly and it looks like they've blown off. Have a lot of cracking. This looks like where they probably get most of the sun. Again, maybe some home repairs, uh, more areas where shingles are look to be slipped or they may have not been installed properly, nailed down properly. HVAC units, so your air conditioning unit, your heater, they're actually a big part. If they're on top of the roof, it's something that we as roofers wanna make sure is sealed. And it's something I wanna bring up. If you have an older unit where these plenums come out and go onto the roof, uh, a lot of times this area leaks. So a lot of times I am told people are having leaks here. Um, with this age, it usually is time to replace the unit, but some people choose not to. But the unit should be enclosed in a curb. And this one here, it actually sits on what we call a metal stick frame. And because it's on a metal stick frame, it does make it a little bit more complicated to replace the roof. We will still deal with it. But again, with this unit and its age, where you can see they've sealed around the unit to actually try to keep leaks from happening. Maybe they've had them previously, but a lot of times you'll see a lot of sealant um, that was put down. And from what I'm seeing, it would be recommended to replace it because again, they usually leak from these plenums that come out. Newer units, everything is enclosed and it has a curb flashing that everything sits within. These don't have a curb flashing, so they usually leak. Satellite dishes are also a big one. Um, with satellite dishes, you could imagine they provide the customer with entertainment. If they're using them, we always ask so that we know to help them get it replaced. If they're not, we can easily dispose of them. So we make sure to document that and ask the customer about that as well. So gutter condition is a big one that we try to look out for because if you look, the gutters, you can tell they're rusting from inside. So we make sure to take pictures of that to bring it up to say, hey, um, when you're replacing the roof, it is the best time to do the gutters in case it's something they weren't thinking to do at the moment. Um, but again, it's not something that has to be done at the same time, but it really is the best time. Um, there's an area I was going to bring up here where you can tell the shingles are really starting to lose all of its granules. They're really dark. So that's something I'm looking at. Also the lifting here on the shingle. So I'm taking pictures of everything to document to go over with the customer. If they were here, it'd be something we'd be going over now, but it's something we're gonna be talking about a little bit later. But all the pictures I'm taking is either for the customer or for our production team to know what to expect when we're doing the job. A little concerning. Um, we replace all flashings, all vents are gonna be replaced as well. And they're all painted to match the color of the roof. So they'll look really nice, but a little concerning how the flashing's sticking out. Um, maybe causing some some water issues since we're not able to inspect inside if i was i'd be checking to make sure there's no damage around the chimney one big reason the flashing is also i forgot to mention why it shouldn't be on top now water can actually run underneath the flashing whereas if it was underneath it would protect the wood in this case it actually ends up usually causing some dry rot that isn't visible from the ground uh, because you can't see the top of the wood um, but in this case may not have happened it's no way to really know but that's why the flashing doesn't sit on top anymore but it's really key now that i just make sure to walk the entire roof make sure i didn't miss any any details miss any damage and after that we'll get off the roof do some final checks and we're done with our inspection in this case we typically would get in the attic first uh, but again the owner isn't here because sometimes the roof can look good and there's multiple layers there's just one layer here um, the way you can tell is there's just shingle paper and then the wood i also can see this is the area that's lower slope there's no double underlayment so um it may be done a while back when codes have changed but odds are it just was something that wasn't done okay guys so we just finished this roof inspection while i'm in the area especially when we have something really quick like this i'm going to drive around a bit see if i can find anybody else that needs some help 
I did see a few roofs before we got to this appointment. So I want to make sure that we get a chance to reach out to them and see if we can help because their roofs were in pretty bad shape. I'm actually going to try to talk to this customer real quick, or this potential client. Hi, my name is Julian. I'm with Cobex. We were just given an inspection on Renda Drive with another one of your neighbors, just right there at the corner facing the high school. I just want to introduce myself. See, are, are you the homeowner by any chance? Yeah? Okay. I just wanted to check in with you. They had some shingles that blew off. And have you had any, or what's been your experience with the storms and whatnot? Yes, we have had some. Yeah, okay. It went really well. So we successfully booked an appointment with this customer that has storm damage on the roof. So our whole goal is gonna to be to try to get their roof covered for them. All right, guys, to recap, we did a full inspection for a customer that we we're gonna be working with remotely. And then we actually knocked on a few neighbors' doors and we booked one appointment for Wednesday. So in two days, the customer really needs our help. They have a few shingles or a few areas in the house that are missing shingles due to the storms. So we're gonna be helping them to work with their insurance to get the roof covered. So that appointment's in a few days. One of the customers that we spoke to, they couldn't do the roof until spring. They weren't open to us doing the roof now. But yeah, guys, we're gonna be helping another neighbor in the process and that's always our goal to help and extend our hands to as many customers and as many people that can use our services. So thanks for tagging along. We hope it was helpful and we look forward to seeing you guys in the future.